Well, good evening, everyone. Um, this topic is living on Dash, which is something that's very strange to a lot of people. So first, I would like to get some crowd sentiment. Who here has ever spent any kind of cryptocurrency? All right, nice. This, is already, this already makes this a strange room because I've done this at cryptocurrency conferences around the world, and it's not always nearly that good. Sometimes it's less than half, which is why do you have it if you don't use it? Now, the next question is, how many people have spent cryptocurrency in a specific point of sale environment, i.e. physically, not just online? That's much better than I thought, but still, I mean, a little drop off. Now, how many people here spend cryptocurrency regularly, as in they have, they, you have to pay monthly bills, you have to, you know, you buy something like every week from the local store, something like that, how many of those? Yeah, so this should be a very familiar topic to most people, although not, there are still some extra tricks. So I have to open with a story when we're talking about, we're talking about how do we get to mass adoption where everyone kind of lives off of it, right? So there's a uh, instrument manufacturer from Germany called Honer, and they had a very strong impact on the musical development and evolution in the north of Mexico because apparently a bunch of people were buying instruments and you know that's where they needed, that's where they got them from, but Honer included sheet music in with those instruments that then they just started like, all right, well, let, we'll play this. And so now you have like all the Bavarian umpa umpa kind of rhythm type stuff ended up in northern Mexican music as a result. So where does, what does this have to do with living off of Dash? Well, in order to get, we, we had a big brainstorming session earlier today. We're talking about, well, how do we get people to spend it? How do we get people to use it? It all starts with the unique value proposition of there's something that you absolutely need it for, right? You can, like, I need it to send a remittance, for example. I need it to save money on this, or I need it to be free in whatever way. And then you use it for that one thing, but as long as you have it connected to, oh, I can actually spend it in other places, then before you know it, it just spending it becomes the usual thing. And so, for example, in my story, I live off of Dash because I want to be free. I don't want to be chained by the old financial system. I want to just live on free money that people don't have control over my life. And so, because of that, that's my unique value proposition, and all the rest kind of comes as a bonus. So. That being said, let me introduce the rest, or let them introduce themselves, the rest of my illustrious panel, uh, starting with you. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Lawrence, AKA Lando Rodbarian on Twitter and other social medias, which uh, like infringe on your privacy, so you might not, shouldn't use it. And <laughs> no, I run uh, two websites. The first one is probably known here in the room, shoppingbit.de, and I sell over 80,000 products within the European Union, so you could imagine the orange big store, but only with crypto, and it's crypto only, of course. And I also do merchandise, like this one, on my second site, it's called satoshigoods.com. Yeah, so, short intro. <laughs> um, hello there, my name is Gabriel Mitakione. I'm Dash Latam Madrid team leader. Um, I have lived on Dash for almost two years uh, from now. I started working on Dash Merchant Venezuela. I worked there for five months. Then I moved here to Europe and started to work with, with this remittances project uh, called Remesa con Dash, where we help Venezuelan migrants to send uh, money to their families in Venezuela by buying products uh, directly to merchants in Venezuela, uh, all in an ecosystem that we generated, uh, and the merchants uh, deliver these products directly to the people's home. Hello, I'm Unchained. I've uh, been in Dash for about five years. I've lived on Dash for about four or five years. Um, and I kind of use Dash as a savings vehicle uh, through instruments like uh, CrowdNode and uh, look forward to using something like Voltoro to hedge into uh, certain investments, things like that, to go, go, go from Dash to gold. So that's uh, 
some of the stuff that I've been doing in Dash and kind of enjoying the freedom that comes with it. Um, because before I used to do business with bank account, banks overseas and um, banking is a very regulated industry and in the last couple of years all the rules and regulations that basically um, request us to know every single thing about you. So I kind of uh, got into Dash for that and enjoy it that way. So my story, it's been relatively well publicized, but in case you weren't aware, uh, I started, I moved to New Hampshire in 2013 for a little thing called the Free State Project, basically a move of, of freedom-minded people to say, let's all get to one spot and just see what happens when a lot of like-minded people are in one spot, sort of like a lot of like-minded people are right here, right now. And I heard about Bitcoin on the way, and I started receiving it in for payment, like I do whatever odd job that they'd give me, and just thought I'd just try to receive it. And it was late 2015 when I closed my bank account, uh, no, that was 2016. Late 2015 when I stopped accepting any fiat currency for payment. If it would pay me in fiat, I wouldn't take it. Only crypto, only Bitcoin at the time. Closed my bank account a few months later, and lived entirely off of Bitcoin for a few glorious months until something called the scaling problem started to happen. And then all of a sudden it was very difficult for me to continue to do that. And it was somewhere around late 2016 where I had to make the choice of do I abandon this living off of crypto, be your own bank experiment, or do I find a way to make it work? So I found a, made a way to make it work, going down coin market cap, looking at what the next project I could feasibly live off of crypto. And the first one I landed on was Dash. And I've been living off of Dash ever since. Still don't have a bank account. And there you go. So, yes. And so, obviously, for, for a lot of people, that might seem like a dream. And I mean, for me, it's just the way I live. And I, of course, it's, it's great fun. Um, but that obviously comes with a few um, challenges. So I'd like to ask everyone, uh, what do you think are big, the biggest barriers to everyone living off of crypto kind of like like I try my best to do and like what do you th and especially in your specific area of expertise so what's the biggest barrier what's stopping people from being able to do this what do you think well it would be kind of easy to just say yeah they need to buy stuff so I'm working on that one but uh, it's no no it sounds like a joke but actually it's kind of sad because I've been in Bitcoin like since 2011 and I just thought, yeah, someone smarter, better financed will make that happen, like, I don't know, Amazon and stuff, because, you know, who doesn't want to get paid up front, no chargebacks and stuff. So, no, it's actually kind of sad to be have first mover advantage in 2019, where lots and lots of companies should be accepting crypto because it's actually the economical and clever thing to do because why hassle around with chargebacks why pay middlemen why um, like infringe on privacy from your customers like with paypal like i don't know if you have tried to read the eula of paypal they got you by the balls so if you're uh, yeah, just put it bluntly <laughs> so like um you put it on your website and they are not hiding it or anything they just upfront tell you hey why don't you do our business analytics? So we check your site and tell you what kind of customers you have and what they usually spend money on. And I was like thinking, okay, why do you have access to all this data? Because you signed the EULA, it's all in there. So there is no privacy with websites which are using PayPal. So that's my first concern because I like my privacy very much because I am, <laughs> I grew up in Bavaria as a, black Muslim kid, it's kind of hard to live there when you get like um, controlled by the police twice a week just because you have a different um, skin color and everyone thinks you're selling drugs. So um, that was kind of hard and I really don't want anyone to experience this kind of surveillance and that's why I try to keep privacy as a like the utmost important thing on my sites um but i'm drifting off again sorry the big barrier is that um too many are living the migos dream of lambo here 
moon there since 2017. Yeah, yeah, okay, there are some Migos fans here. Thank you very much. I thought I was the only one listening to rap music in the crypto space because there are too many metal ads. Not that I don't like metal, but <laughs> 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 yeah, rock on. No, um, so everyone is just focused on um, accumulating coins, holding till death, and it's really pathetic sometimes when um, other coiners come to me and tell me, hey, I want to buy some crypto merch, but um, I would like to pay with PayPal. So, and there were not like some guys who were asking it, there were a lot of people who were constantly sending me emails now, you know, I like your stuff, it's pretty cool, and, but I don't want to pay in crypto. So I had to move to a second site because, well, I need to live on crypto somehow and make some revenue. So you make a second site up, put PayPal in, and forget privacy at all, because there is no privacy. But it's really sad. It's 90% of Satoshi goods is paid with PayPal, even with free shipping worldwide. So it's like, I don't know, it, it's kind of sad. So there's lots of stuff to do, and we have to get rid of the Lambo moon mentality, because it's stupid. and when Dash or other coins will reach 100,000 euros or 1 million euros, you will have Venezuela-like um, situation and you won't get shit for your euros. So, or your coins, because it, it's worthless. So we have to find a new way to live on crypto exclusively. Well, I didn't tell, but uh, I'm Venezuelan. Uh, <laughs> that's a good start. So um, uh, I received my payments from the Dash merchant in Dash. So I had, I have had, I have to lead uh, of Dash since I started working with Dash. So um, it has already helped me to change my style of life. I, it has given me more opportunities, right? Um, the biggest challenge I have faced uh, is the um, the problem with the trust of the Venezuelan. We I come from a culture that you cannot trust anybody, and anybody shouldn't trust you either. So um, when you uh, engage a merchant and offer the service, so uh, you can educate the merchant and teach the merchant how to accept Dash and how this is not a scam, it's really hard to convince them to, to let them know that this is not a scam, it's another way of business. You can expand your business for di from this. So that's one of the most, um, uh, the, the biggest barriers I have faced. Uh, now working with, re with, with remittances, it's a little bit different, but it's the same market because I have to uh, train Venezuelans, migrants, to uh, learn how to use Dash, how to make payments to merchants, and they just have to trust me, uh, trust in my word, so they can so, uh, send uh, the little money they can make here in Europe to their families in Venezuela to get them food, to, the, to get them products, and that's the most difficult part, to make the Venezuelan trust you so, uh, on, and trust Dash and not uh, not to think that dash is a scam uh, that it's a very difficult job but when you get it done it's uh it gets you a lot of satisfaction too because you are doing actually a really good job you are helping people you are helping people that doesn't have accounts bank accounts not because they don't believe in the financial system but the, they don't have the residence they live uh, as an um, illegal immigrants, so they ha they can use Dash as an alternative uh, to help their families in Venezuela. All right, so I'll recap or I'll ask the question again because after three people, it kind of got a little lost in the wind. So the question was, what makes you, what do you think causes people not to live on Dash, right? Barrier. Uh, barrier. 
All right. So um, what I've realized is that people don't understand the difference of an open system versus a closed system. Um, people tend to like something that's guarded for them, taken care for them, and hesitate to take their own ownership of their own information, their own keys. And um, I, for instance, uh, when I first got into cryptocurrency um, five years ago or so, first thing I did was I tested out every entrance and exit point that I could find. When I got into crypto, I knew from the beginning, I was like, okay, I know how to get in, I know how to get out, right? Same way if you have the euro or the dollar. If you have a position in a currency, you know how to get in and you know how to get out. Um, once I figured out that I could buy and sell it, I can buy it and sell it like any other currency. To me, it doesn't matter. I can go from Thailand to uh, Serbia to somewhere in Italy and transfer all these different currencies. So for me, it wasn't a big thing. Um, but what people have to understand and realize is all you need to do is be able to surf it like a wave. It's kind of like uh, uh, riding a wave. You just have to know how to get in and get out and transfer your value whatever way you want to. Um, and there are huge uh, benefits to using Dash. Um, like I said, that the, the people don't know the different that you can earn uh, dividends on your Dash through uh, through shared services or um, uh, independent masternode services. Uh, you can switch in and out of gold in a, in, a, in a short while pretty soon. So what more do I need as a user in a financial system? I need to be able to hold my value personally. I want to be able to trade in and out. I want to be able to buy uh, precious metals or an, an asset. Same way I have with dollars. If I have dollars, I want to be able to buy gold, silver, um, or get in and out of financial assets. So with Dash, I have that. So most once uh, I think once we spread that information out, I think a lot more people will will understand the beauty of the system. It's an open source system. Your money is in an open source system that allows you to um, be free in your transactions, and that's even better than having premium banking at one of these banks. Like you can, uh, there's no other bank that you can go to. You have to go to probably a Swiss bank. I don't have that experience in the U.S., but probably Swiss banks you can buy gold. In the U.S., you couldn't do that, or anywhere else in, in in the world, you can't really go into a bank and buy gold unless you're in like Swiss Switzerland or China, maybe in Hong Kong. Um, but these are unique attributes of Dash, and that's why I I think this is a growing eco ecosystem and it's an amazing system because. Um, very few other cryptocurrencies uh, allow you this opportunity to do something like this. So that's what I think the barrier is. is the f people don't understand the, f the fiat entrance and off ramps and how to use it within the ecosystem. You know, because I'd prefer to keep Dash within the ecosystem and spend what you need from it. You know, so. So it seems like a lot of those are educational based barriers, right? People don't. People don't know that they should be spending it. They think they ain't got to hold on to it. People don't know that they could trust it, or people just don't know why it's important to have a free financial system. Where I've hit the barriers tend to be infrastructure, to where there's just not a lot of services out there that support. It's not so much businesses in particular, but so for example, when trying to sign up a merchant, which has been kind of my experience, right? If I want to spend Dash on something, I gotta go to that guy and convince them he's gotta take Dash for it because you know, it's like the Wild West. And that's one of the reasons why New Hampshire, of all places, is such a great crypto spot, is just because it's easy to talk to the business owners. Very independent-minded people, very like, it's easy to talk to them. You just say, hey, you want to use it? Or sure, I guess. But for example, there's no, um, in, the, in the US, there's no, who, who here ever used BitPay before the whole block size problem? Yeah, BitPay was fantastic. It was just, you sign someone up, you pay them 1%, they get the money in their bank at the end of the day or whenever it was. Perfect. It was, And since then, there's been no, in the U.S., again, there's a bunch of um, payment processors around here, but in the U.S., in my narrow experience, uh, there's not a lot of good ones that, that do that. There's, there is no such thing. And so, for example, um, any pay who's supposed to be on the panel sadly couldn't make it today, uh, have a great payment interface, but that's just to receive the crypto. It's like, how do you convert it back end? So, okay, well, I talked to someone at Uphold. Okay, well, why don't you sign up with an Uphold account, get that going, and then open your USD card, and then deposit with Dash and get that address and copy and paste that into your AnyPay thing so your payments go and get auto-converted, but then you have to wait until you have about 200 or so dollars in your USD balance on Uphold, and then you got to convert it to your bank account, it costs about $4, and then you should still save money over credit card fees. 
I mean, all that is true, right? But it's a long conversation because just the the infrastructure is not quite there. And then, you know, sometimes with like Coinbase, Coinbase is easier to set people up with. Thankfully, Coinbase is now there. But now it's like, all right, so you got Coinbase, but when you take the payment, it doesn't auto convert. So when I pay you for this month's stuff, um, just open the app and convert it before something drastic happens. <laughs> like ten percent of the value goes down. It's like. There's those infrastructure problems. The biggest problem for me personally has been a bill pay service. And that's why I always like, my ears perk up when I hear something like earlier that presentation, um, which unfortunately might not work as well in the US. I still have to investigate. But in the US, bill pay services keep getting shut down, like crypto bill pay ones, because banks do not want to deal with, um, they do not want to deal with cryptocurrency. And the bill pay, there is no such, you don't just like have like an IBAN number you can just send to and then there you go, it's all done. It's like a lot more complicated. So infrastructure is the biggest thing. When I talk to a merchant, how do they use it? How do they process it? How do they track their things? Like AnyPay is just starting to get a tip jar system in their, in their app and they didn't before. So then every time I'd hold Dash Meet up, I'd say, all right, at this, if it's this one server, they love crypto and they you could tip them to their own wallet it's fantastic and then oh he, she, uh, he's not here today well for her you, you gotta have some cash you gotta pay with crypto but you gotta take different money to to leave a tip which you know in the u.s tipping is basically mandatory you'd say you know it's everyone <laughs> unless you're an evil person it's almost mandatory so there's those infrastructural challenges of the the system doesn't compute those things together and so uh, the problem with infrastructure is who's going to build it if there are no customers for that infrastructure? And how can you be the customer if there's no infrastructure? And so there will have to be some sort of event for a massive amount of people clamoring to do what I do, and then people will start building up all the infrastructure. So the next thing is, what is the best part about living on crypto? Like, per, is, what makes it the best? What's handling crypto, using it in, you know, taking all your payments in Dash, all that stuff. What contrasted with the old system, what's the best part about using the new system? The best part, um, from merchant perspective, it's quite easy. It's 0% uh, risk of chargeback. So um, most people don't realize, but there's a lot of credit card fraud going on. But um, when you do crypto only, there is no chargeback risk. The money is in your account instantly. Well, if they pay in Dash, of course. Um, and it's actually faster to get fiat money back because with like Kraken, for example, I sent my Dash to Kraken and within 10 minutes, I have the euros on my bank account. It takes longer to like um, get money from my savings account to my business account or vice versa. In just I could just convert it to crypto and send it to the other bank account that's faster like it's ridiculous you know you would imagine that it's like the fastest way to keep it in the banking ecosystem but it's not and um, that's the number one and the second part I already said but I have to reiterate on this one you get the money directly in your bank account this is such a huge um, advantage and also, it is my um, pitch for my suppliers. So when I, you know, you have to start somewhere to get more adoption. So and I was thinking, OK, uh, let's get the suppliers here in, well, in, in <laughs> Switzerland, I mean in Germany. So in Germany, I get the suppliers, and I tell them, OK, you give me a um, payment target that's cool, like 14 days. How about, uh, by, uh, how about I pay up front? And they go, what? You want to pay up front? Who wants to pay up front? Well, I will pay up front if you take crypto. And they're like, ah, OK, so how does it work? Can I exchange it to euros? Yeah, and that's the point. So um, it's really nice to live on crypto. And I would really applaud any entrepreneurs in this room who would like take some weight off my shoulders because you know, groceries, um, drugstore products, I cannot make everything on my own. <laughs> so if someone else would also chime in to like build something, um, there is a custom base for it, um, but it takes time to build because there's lots of trust needed to get it going. So. 
Um, well, uh, I, as I said, I worked for Dash Merchant for five months, and the best part, well, let me start. I'm a materials engineer, and wa when I was studying in the university, uh, I didn't know what I was going to do with my life when I finished my studies because of the minimum salary in, in Venezuela. Uh, today, uh, the minimum salary is like four dollars. And to make an example, um, a pack of rice, of one kilo of rice, it's like 50 cents. So you can uh, think how much can meat, one kilo of meat, uh, can be valued, right? Uh, Four dollars monthly. <laughs> yeah. So um, when I started to work with Dash, um, I started to get mm, a better salary, so I like upgraded my opportunities so I could use money to help my family. My parents uh, uh, were not working at the time, so I could help them to buy food, to get the bill paid, and something like that. Uh, once living in, uh, in Europe, uh, working with Dash Latam, one of the benefits is that when you don't have an account on, on a bank and a bank doesn't want to open you an account because you don't have the residence paper or something, you can, I, I could live with Dash through some web, uh, web pages or exchanges like Bitnovo that got this uh, integrated uh, debit card that you could top up with Dash. So I could uh, evade all the financial system or, or all, the, all the banking system, top up my uh, debit card with Dash and still live on Dash and get from Europe to Venezuela. Uh, first, you gonna you gotta do the exchange from euro to dollar, then from dollar to bolivar. Um, there are lots of fees that are uh, um, in between in the middle of, of any transaction, right? So, if I do a remittance from uh, from Spain to Venezuela with Dash, the Venezuelan is receiving Dash and it's using it in lots of merchants that uh, already accept Dash. Uh, or can change it through uphold to dollars if they want, so they can save, or change it to Bolivar if they want. So it's like an ecosystem that it's growing in not just in Venezuela, but in Colombia, Ecuador, Peru, Guatemala, Trinidad y Tobago, uh, Brazil. Um, so it's like a very specific region where I think the, the, the DAO and the DFOs should focus because of the great potential it shows. All right, so the benefits of living on Dash. Um, f one, freedom, two, privacy. And um, I've traveled around the world a lot and I've probably been to close to 60 countries or 70 countries. And uh, one thing I've noticed is that um, the socio-political socio situation in different countries is changing around the world. Um, the Western world used to be free, and I'm actually finding more freedom in former socialist-slash-communist countries in Eastern Europe um, are more on the edge with cryptocurrency technology and blockchain technology. So I'd say go where you're treated best. Like I, that's uh, one of the benefits of cryptocurrency and one of the best things about it is go where you treat it best. You don't have to live, you're not a potted plant. You don't have to live in the country that you're born in. Um, if, you have a, if you have your savings in your, in your crypto, you can basically go wherever you want. Your money's with you. And uh, to give you an example, um, one of the best things about living in Eastern Europe is that there are crypto ATMs that buy sell. So I can pretty much buy and sell cryptocurrency um, in any ATM, st in probably about five or six different ATM uh, buy and sell ATMs in, in the city that I'm in. Um, so that's one of the benefits of cryptocurrencies. You can move where you find the best services that you would like to see. And I wanted to be in a place where um, I could cash out to an ATM and, and get cash. And for me, Eastern Europe was probably the best best place you can get at ATMs. You can go to Ukraine and, and uh, there are stores that'll sell you in cash. Um, Bitcoin and, and, and cryptocurrencies, and you can sell stuff in, in cash and, and cash out that way. So um, that's the benefit for me, is if you have a bank account, you can't do that. You're tied into where did this come from, 
who's taking it, who are you sending the money to. Um, your privacy and your freedom is worth a lot. And I used to work in advertising and marketing. Um, a lot of people don't understand that when you when you use any, if you're not paying for a service, you are the product. Um, they'll market you and monetize you on the back end every which way they can. So privacy is is, is an important aspect of fi of uh, money and finance, and I think that's um, that's one of the benefits of cryptocurrencies. That it's it's the most important thing, is your privacy and your freedom. Nobody can tell you when to take out your money, what to do with it. It's all yours. Yeah, I have a similar, to summarize both of those points in one word, I would just only go with freedom, right? Because obviously privacy is tied to that. So when I first started living all off of crypto, I still kept a bank account because once in a while, there was just not a lot of places around me that took it. So I also have to cash out sometimes. So I used wall of coins, which is like a peer to peer system that then people would deposit, I'd sell them Bitcoin, they'd deposit in my bank account and then, you know, things would be fine. And so um, I remember one time specifically that kind of nailed that point home, which is um, I was going to go pay rent, and then I checked my balance, and I had a negative balance. I'm like, where did this come from? What happened? Like, what happened to all my money? <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm screwed. And then it turns out someone had found a way to forge some check in my name and did some purchase and, like, took it all. And, you know, I got it sorted out, but... As I was getting it at the bank branch, getting it sorted out, I was just thinking, like I had, like some, they just let some person just take all my money because he wrote. So, and they showed the picture too. It was like there wasn't even my signature. It didn't even look like my name on the signature. Just like someone wrote some stuff on some random piece of paper. It's like, yeah, give me your money. And like, you gave this person my money, some random lady in Florida, to buy a car. You just gave her my money because you wrote some random stuff on it, not even a secret code, just random stuff on a piece of paper. With that, yes, that's what it was, some lady in Florida who did it. And it's like, it's true, that, that's true. She wanted to buy a Chevy something or other. And like, like you just gave her, like, this is, and it, then of course there's like that anxiety always of, especially if you live in low means, of if you have a bank account, they can take money out of the account at any time, and they do, whether it's like direct deposit or you swipe your card, sometimes you get a double charge. You know, there's like, you don't, it's not yours, they can take it out at any time. And there's always that fear of like, you know, after you swipe it, even if it goes through, it's like, you don't know how much you actually have at any one point because there could have been a change. At least with crypto, even though the, the valuation goes up and down, I know how much Dash I have and it's just not gonna change. And so there's that, after that point, they just said, okay, we need to close your account and open a new, we need to open, close your account and open a new one um, because this one's compromised. So yeah, just don't open a new one. I'm done, done forever. No more bank for me. <laughs> so that's sort of that like freedom story of like, now I don't have to worry about like someone taking that out. And also, if you ever use cryptocurrency, which you know, all of you pretty much, right? You realize how there's a certain, feeling, like an emotional feeling, the way you, like, I used to always stress over bills, right? Like, not not just because I couldn't afford them, but no, just the process of, all right, I gotta get the card info and pay in and just, I gotta, it just was always a stressful thing, but now I look forward to paying for things with Dash. Like, honestly, I'm just like, oh, I get to open up the wallet and put a little beep, zip. It's just so fun. And part of the reason it's so fun and enjoyable is because it's freedom. It's, you, all you have to do is just go, Here's what I want to send it to. Here you go. I don't have to ask anyone's permission. There's no like, you pay them and then it's like, did the charge go through? I didn't, I don't know, I don't see. Oh, did they double charge? Did they, we have no record. Oh, well, where's my customer support ticket? It's like, no, I just zap and it shows up on the blockchain and you can just say, here you go. It's permanent, it's there. And it just makes it so easy to where, like I've been, I've probably given away many, you know, thousands of ranks of my own money just to random people, here, have some dash, have some dash, you know, over the last few years. Can you imagine doing that with any money? Go up to a random person on the street and just be like, you know, five francs, do you want something? Like, no, no one does that, it was just, it's mine. It's like this shame, almost like shame and the distrust mentality and this, this fear mentality around money that it's just something weird that, you know, but with, with crypto, it's like, when I send people dash, it just, it feels good. When I receive it, it feels good. And it's just, there's no friction to that. and. I um, was, there was on, we're doing some crypto pub crawl 
in Portsmouth a few months ago. And this uh, friend of a friend, he was a lawyer, his first experience, I gave him I gave him a wallet, he installed a wallet, and I just sent him some dash, and he went and bought coffee. And he was just like blown away. This is so fun. Oh my gosh, it's so great. Because no registration process, no permission from anyone, no like, all right, well, we're going to, it's just like, that's it. It's just that simple. It's like digital cash, except it's not like, oh, someone's going to steal that out of your wallet now that they see you got, it's, it's more, you know, more secure. You can just, and of course, paying for stuff across um, borders. There was a friend of mine who uh, had some very serious trouble in the south of Mexico where people were looking to, to basically kill him for a few months, and he had to escape. And the way I, I he, you know, he fled to another country for asylum and he didn't have the money. And I just said, use this service, tell me the numbers, send me the, the numbers they have and I'll just pay it. And so, you know, I bought his plane ticket with, with crypto and he got out of the country and I mean, he's still alive today, so that's a good start. But part of it is like, I, it's not like, well, who's paying for the ticket? Oh, is, are you associated with this guy? The, you know, the cartels are looking for him. Are you involved? Like, no, it's just he didn't. He paid for it with crypto that came from the sky from nowhere and wasn't associated and just freedom. You should really try it out. <laughs> All right, now, how much time do we have left? You have 10 minutes? All right. 10 minutes for questions. If you have any, if you don't want questions, I'd be more than happy to run out of here and never see you again. No, I do want to see you again. But question. Uh, yes, you had your hand up first. Loud. Yes. actually does the most of living on that. There's a clear opportunity cost that comes with it, right? I mean, you work in the US, I understand you can have a 401k, for example. You can have a mortgage without a bank account. How do you factor these into your, your life? And then just one, one part. The other part is, as an example, a few weeks ago, Amanda Johnson posted a video where she was paying at a Walgreens or something, <coughs> using Dash to a gift card. And in the video, you could see the amounts. And I calculated compared to a, a, a reward credit card. She overpaid, quote unquote, by 13%. Mm. That's, that's a sizable number. And uh, yeah, I appreciate the, the idealism and the freedom you get on one hand, but how, how do you think about the cost that comes with it? Or is that you just, is the freedom worth, for, worth it for you so much that you give up 401k, you will never buy a house and have a mortgage, and you're happy to pay extra on every transaction you make? Yes, yeah, so first off, the for yes, so the question was, there's a significant opportunity cost between living in a very narrow world of only cryptocurrency because so much of the financial system, like buying a house, having a mortgage, etc., there's a bunch of costs associated with that. So is it worth it? So first off, to answer your question, for someone like me who's in a position to afford it, absolutely, it's worth it for the freedom. I'm all, yes, I'm an idealist, but like retrospectively still, yes, it's worth it. Now, it because it's a new system, it's like, for example, um, I remember um, a time when in the United States, beer sucked and coffee sucked. It wasn't that long ago, it was like a couple decades, it just, none of it was any good. And so if you were in a good place, oh, you're in Seattle, great coffee, if I'm not in Seattle, no great coffee. So you literally have to live in Seattle if you want something like that. Or it's like, American beer sucks, you have to go live in Europe. You all go to Munich, it's great beer and stuff, yeah, sure. Now, there's craft breweries everywhere in the US that have like really high quality beer. There's great coffee shops everywhere. Now it's like, you don't have to have that um, sacrifice. So it's the same thing with living off of crypto. In the, in the beginning, and with each passing, you know, I would say quarter or six month period, it becomes less of a less of a mental exercise to live off of cryptos. And now I, I don't just have to go to the one place. It's not just like, well, we go to the Porter House, we want to pay the dash, that's it. It's like now we can go to another place too, and then there's a third place. So it's getting a whole lot better. Um, my a lot of those problems just because, you know, at least especially at this stage in my life, I have no interest in, you know, owning a house where now I owe a bunch of money to the government just for owning a thing. You know, in property taxes, like I, those things, it's not something I want, et cetera. Um, 
mostly I don't I don't really have to pay. I mean, there are, there are, the only thing that where it really hits me is it doesn't really, but slightly, is I have to book my flights through Cheap Air because I you know they take Dash and pretty much no one else does for the flights as far as I know, and so sometimes Cheap Air is not so Cheap Air compared to something else. Sometimes, but I mean that's like a very small thing. Other than that, I just you know it's perfectly competitive. Now there's always costs associated with everything else. So for example. The biggest thing is the um, the inflation cost of living on fiat. It's different from every single country, but I mean your purchasing power goes down over time. It just does. It's, it's just what happens, right? That's why fiat is not good. Now with crypto, like for example, living on Dash, like purchasing power on a short enough time frame, you can say, oh yeah, look, you got roasted. It was terrible. But I mean, I f my first this is before I ever worked for Dash explicitly for the for the Dash DAO. But my first Dash I ever earned was I wrote some article for a publication and they paid me three Dash for it, which you know that was seven dollar Dash back then. So like if you zoom out enough, just whatever extra costs, which I have not really experienced too many extra costs. Usually, in fact, you know I've used some. You know when I go buy my coffee, I get Dash back from it. When I buy gift cards, I'll half the time I get dash back. The other half, it's just just about like market rate. And so, uh, my favorite place is this place called La Maison Navarre in Portsmouth. It's a little French bakery and they have a little espresso machine. And yeah, they use the any pay point of sale system. And so, if I spend like two dollars on a coffee, I get twenty cents worth of the dash sent back to my change address. So. And then eGifter through giftcards.dash.org. Again, this is too, it's a little US centric. I don't think it works very well in other countries, but it has a dash back um, component to it. And there's a bunch of places that will kind of give discounts. Generally speaking, you don't have to pay a premium, especially if you're doing like peer to peer. There's a, and also a lot of the, um, if you do peer to peer like sales, et cetera, there's not a lot of costs. Um, they tend to be, you know, mom and pop merchants, as they call them, and therefore cheaper, right? Because every time you're buying for, from a larger business, there's a lot of infrastructure costs you have to pay that aren't just, here's what it costs me to make this with a little bit of profit to live on. So I don't really find that that part to be a sacrifice. Um, it just, it's mostly more limited options, to be honest. I mean, there's, but you know, of course, because of the, the lack of friction, it just tends to be you know, there's a lot of like time that goes into typing out, you know, credit card numbers or linking things or, you know, going for the, and of course, um, if you have a, I mean, banks always have their own rules. Like if you, if you use credit cards, there's always interest on that, which is, you know, does that's, that's own thing. You have like minimum balances for, you know, checking accounts and things like that. There's always, there's always some extra, there's always some extra hidden cost on that side. So when you're getting the trade off, you know, there's a trade off in the other direction. The services are always getting better every month. So. Yes, that's exactly it. The services are getting better every month. So the 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 problem that you're talking more about a 2017 to early 2018 problem, not so much a 2019 problem. It's it's getting getting better. Yes. Actually, two questions. Does one of you have children? Mm -hmm. Of course, I have children. <laughs> do you or you don't? Yes, I do. Okay, so is it possible to live entirely off crypto when having? Uh, he's free. No, it's not possible because well, um, like paying rent and electricity bills, and I know Martin is working really hard on Lamium, um, but <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a kind. Uh, well, Germany has some kind of quirks with um, land lords, which they are not usually private persons. They're just like some co sort of consortium. And you have to um, like get the whole consortium to accept it. I don't know the correct English term for it, so but I hope you can follow. Yeah, yeah, they they kind of state owned like a genossenschaft if someone knows the English word for it, and um, that's kind of difficult. And also, like you said earlier, with um, the mom and pop shops in New Hampshire, where you just go up to the owner and say, yeah, take crypto. Hey, oh, fine, cool. Yeah, you can try that in Germany, but they're like only like five uh, chains, like you go to Rewe, Lidl, Aldi, you cannot just go to one store, you have to go to the headquarters somewhere in Germany, 
get them to install a new POS system, and then yeah, Jan is working really hard on that, but um, it takes time, way longer. So no, you cannot live on crypto really good. You would have to use voucher services for everything, which I don't think is a really good idea for adoption. It's nice for short-term fix. I think Joel can speak from experience there. Um, but we need like a real crypto ecosystem, like a full circle, and then it will be possible. Yeah, so that's another part. Um, the person, the worst person to try to live entirely off of crypto today is a middle class person with children because there's like the least it, it sounds weird because that, that that's actually some of the least flexibility if you're poor you have a lot of flexibility if you're rich you have a lot of flexibility if you're right in the middle it's like nah you're kind of locked into that track right there it's it, you probably can but then you have to let me put it this way yes you can but it, first off you you know i know some people who are completely unbanked and live off crypto and have children but they're a little a little wild you know a little, little hippie like it can happen it can happen but it's not as advisable the thing is um your flexibility is much tighter so you have to you have to have much many more because your, your costs are a lot more fixed right it's like well i have to this that and now you know i can't just like you know, oh, I'm, my health care is fine. And then you start hurting, you go and negotiate with the doctor. Hey, you know, I got my I got bicep surgery. Can you can you take crypto if I'll do this big? Or, you know, you, it's like, my kid's sick, I need help now. Like, it's a little, your flexibility is much, much tighter. But, yeah, was that, that was one question, or was that two? Do you see that as an opportunity cost? No, because it's not, it's, it's like, for example, right now I have the I'm living under the opportunity cost of not being an astronaut. <laughs> and l let's be honest, it'd be a fantastic career for some people. I have no interest. That's a zero cost to me. So in my case, I'm living the way I always. I'm living my own dream. So zero cost to me personally. All right. One yeah. Last question, I think. Right. Oh, uh, what what time is it? How much time we have left? Two minutes. So Two questions. I'll get through really quick. Fine. So quickly, um, how do you hedge the volatility? With a small amount, we can all deal with it. Living off crypto is different. Yeah. Nine months, nine months, anything between 12 to 24 months ago, if you started at any of those dates, you would be in the minus. How do you deal with that? Yes. So there's two sides of that. First off, over the long enough time period where there's ups and downs and downs and ups. First off, you know, I do get paid in a fixed valuation and not a fixed dash amount every month. And of course, if I was paid in a, in a fixed dash amount every month, I would be horrifically rich by now, you know, <laughs> because, uh, you know, you start when it's like pretty low and then it's like, oh, I'm still getting, like now you're getting like $180,000 worth every single month. Like, no, of course that would be terrible. So. Because of that, at worst, you just if you expect the price to be crashing a lot, you get paid, you pay all your bills right away, right? And of course, with Dash, because it's so frictionless, you just go zap, 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 they're all paid, it's great. Now, of course, over a long enough time frame, you just like, you know, okay, well, it's really up now, let's buy a new kitchen table, let's take care of this, let's say, you know, other stuff, and then when it's down, it's just like, <laughs> you just kind of like, all right. So can we get go get some f vegetables to throw into the ramen noodles just to make them a little spicier? We'll, we'll make it different, but like, oh no, I'm not doing just I'm not leaving the house or you just buy like a giant bag of coffee beans and just work the you know what out of the espresso machine espresso machine at home, never go out for like yeah. There's you do you have those cycles of like good times and bad times. And it's a very I've written I think I wrote an article about this. Like Renarco about just about everything because that one comes out every Sunday, you know. Uh, it's like being in, there's a certain bit of like kind of like being an entrepreneur and a crypto person and a wild animal is all kind of very similar because there's always like, what do you have? Like, you always have to go look for your, your lunch for the next day and you're not guaranteed that. So, for if you're an entrepreneur, you don't just show up and get paid. It's like you got customers. And then you get paid. If you don't have customers, you lose money for the month, right? And you have to figure it out. You have to deal with that up and down. The up is good, 
you know, the down is not good and you gotta like, you gotta sort of dollar cost average your life. So if you get good at that, it works with crypto. Also, you can, uh, if you have a decent size amount, if you're talking about uh, not like, uh, if you're talking about a decent size amount, you can also do futures. Like if you can do uh, Bitcoin futures or something like that to hedge your uh, your positions. So there's uh, two options that I can think of off the top of my head right now. You can hedge it through futures, and that can be any size. Or you can do stuff like um, like Voltoro, where you can set, trade your Dash for gold or something else. Um, so there's a lot of opportunities to hedge, man. Like That's what people don't seem to have a mindset about, is that you can't... You can't hedge this, or you can't live on it because it's not stable or, or very volatile. There's a lot of a lot of things coming down the pipe that allow you to hedge your position and uh, add more dash when you want to, or more gold or physical physical uh, metals or whatever. So there's a lot of options coming down, and I think living off of crypto is a lot easier now. It's a lot easier now than it was five years ago. You know. So you would actually buy a sh you would actually short Bitcoin. Uh so that if it goes down, you, you gain on the other side. Yeah, whichever position you're holding. Yeah, I think you can, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. John? Well, if you, it, it depends also in the, on the specific geographic region, you know, because if you talk about the Venezuelan Bolivar, it's a more volatile uh, uh, currency, volatile but volatile in just downtrend, <laughs> always a downtrend, so... If I get paid in Dash, uh, it's like having savings, and I can exchange it to Bolivars, just the right amount of what I need to survive or to get things. So for me in Venezuela, well, I could live on Dash in Venezuela easily because of the, the situation with the hyperinflation. This occurs in not only in Venezuela, but in Nigeria on in other countries that, that got that those economies that suck, you know? <laughs> yeah, so I think we're all out for time. Feel free to, I mean, I don't, can't, not sure if I can speak for everyone, but at least me, feel free to hit me up at any point with other questions. I'll be around all evening. Now let's go spend some Dash. <laughs>